If you want to get the grade 9 in any GCSE, you need to practice until you don't make mistakes. You need a way to make the hard questions seem easy. This is Gorilla Physics, and I'm going to show you how to get the grade 9. Thanks to Tassame for sponsoring this video. Tassame is an app that helps students get the top grades at GCSE. It's described as the scientific way to learn, and that really appeals to me as a head of science. Check out the links in the description and the pinned comment to find out more. Now stick with this video because we're going to go really in depth into what your brain is actually doing when you're trying to solve exam questions. That's right, I'm going to actually talk to you about the science of thinking. So let's go into the content. To make a question seem easy, you need to have the knowledge ready to go to solve that problem. I know that might seem an obvious thing to say, but bear with me as we look through this. I want to talk about how you structure your revision. Should you interleave or should you do blocked revision? So most people will do blocked revision and that means you start at the start and you work your way through topic by topic. You do a whole topic until you're happy with it and then you move on to the next. Now there's a problem with that because the last thing you revise before you go ahead and you sit that exam is the last topic. So you'll probably do really well on those questions but you might not do really well on the rest because it's been quite a while since you actually saw them. But the science says, the evidence says that you should really work across the whole unit of work. So these topics here, you should work across them bit by bit. You should be interleaving and spacing out those questions. So what you should be doing is coming back to the topics that you've already studied until you've mastered them. The evidence says that this boosts recall speed and it boosts recall accuracy as well. It makes sense to do it in order because that's how all the books are written. But actually the evidence says that interleaving in this way, that moving from topic to topic is a far better idea. The way you do that is by doing lots and lots of recall questions. The recall questions, they actually build your ability to solve problems. You see, an exam question is really a problem to be solved. So you do recall practice to enable you to find it easier to solve the problems. Now this is the basics of cognitive load theory. Essentially, cognitive load theory states that a question is only as hard as how much cognitive work you have to do to solve it. To solve a problem, you need to bring forward some information from two places. From your long-term memory, that's the stuff that you know in your head that you remember, and from your sensory memory, which is the stuff that you're given in the question, that you're given in, from your senses that you have to find out from actually just reading the question. And you have to load both of those things into your working memory. Now your working memory is the things that you're thinking about at that instant when you're actually in the exam room trying to solve the question. So an easier question maybe would have one item from the long-term memory, one item from the sensory memory. Something you remember, something you've been given in the question, and you use those two things to solve the problem. But a harder question, one with a higher cognitive load, would just have more things that you need to retrieve from either your long-term memory or you need to get from reading the question. And the more things that you have in that working memory, the harder that question's gonna be. There's limited space in your working memory. And a harder question would have to have more things in those working memories that you'd have to use to solve the problem in the question. So you have to use the information stored in your working memory to actually solve the puzzle and come to a solution for that problem posed by the question. So what interleave practice does is it actually speeds up the rate at which you can load things from your long-term memory into your working memory. And that makes it less of a cognitive load because it's easier for you to get information ready to actually solve the problem. You don't have to spend so much time and mental effort actually thinking, oh, what was that thing again? You just know it. And that is how you make the hard questions seem easy. So to solve any question, you've got to get some information from your brain and some information from the question and you've got to use them to solve the problem. So here's an example of a high cognitive load question. This question is actually about echolocation. So the first thing you need to do to solve this problem is you need to remember that distance is speed times time. That's an item from your long-term memory and the more you practice recalling that, the quicker that's gonna be. Then you need to get the information from the question to help you solve the problem as well. The first bit of information you come across is actually the times taken for these radar pulses to go to and reflect back from these different planets or dwarf planets actually as they are. But you also need to remember from your long-term memory that actually You've been given the time in hours and you need to convert that into seconds. And you need to remember how to do that. Also in the question, you're given a speed. So you need to have that information loaded up into your working memory ready to solve the problem. And then lastly, you need to recall that because it has gone there and back, the distance that you work out using distances speed times time, you have to divide that by two. 
So we've got five pieces of information in our working memory. That is pretty hard. And this is what examiners do when they want to make a question harder. They just add more information that you need to store in your working memory whilst you process that problem, whilst you work out the solution to the problem. That's probably why you have that familiar feeling of not really knowing where to start on some exam questions. It's because there's so much information, it's like information overload. And then lastly, you need to actually do the problem. You need to actually do the solution. In this case, you have to do a calculation three times and do it accurately to get the marks. So you need to practice retrieving that information from your long-term memory so that you can spend more time and more effort on actually solving the problems. And if you need a bit of help with that, I've got a suggestion. Thanks again to Tasmai for sponsoring this video. Tasmai uses AI to target the areas that you need to develop to master the content of GCC. Tasmai gets to know you and make sure that you keep practicing your key priorities until you can't get them wrong. I use Tasmai in my school to make sure students have memorized the key content for their exams. We trust it because it's based on the science of how people learn. And we know that we can rely on our students who do just 10 minutes of Tasmai four times a week. We know we can rely on them to get all of the recall questions and we know that they can remember the key facts for those harder cognitive load questions. Find the link in the description to find out more. Remember, the more you practice, the more confident you're gonna get. Regular quizzing and testing is the best way to prepare yourself for those exams. Right now though, you can get started by watching this playlist. It's gonna talk you through how to solve a whole bunch of exam questions.